Right, the first section I'm going to talk about is reporting organising groupings of the studies. So this refers to the first item of the SWIM reporting guidance, grouping studies for the synthesis. So really what this um, item is about is how we deal with the heterogeneity in reviews, how are we going to group these studies together? Um, and there's a saying in the, in the UK that you can't compare apples and oranges. Apples and oranges are not the same thing. In the same way, we can think about the studies. There's reasons why we can't do the meta-analysis. There may be a lot of diversity in those studies. But what we want to do is we want to find some way of bringing the studies together to group them. So while apples and oranges, no, they're not the same thing, they are both fruit. And at that level, we can see there's something common to them. And in the same way, we can try and find some level of similarity or commonality between the studies that lets us um, find a way to bring the studies together in groups. So the first part of item one, item 1A says, provide description of and rationale for groups used in the synthesis. So as ever, what we'd be doing when we're thinking about grouping them is deciding how to group by the PICO or, or considering study design and risk of bias. And of course, when we're thinking about how to group these studies together, we'll be thinking about what's going to be useful for the people that are actually going to use the review. So when we're reporting how we group them, it is important to clearly explain how have we grouped these studies and to explain and justify why it makes sense to group in that way. And the second part of item one is item 1b, detail and provide rationale for any changes made subsequent to the protocol in the groups used in the synthesis. So of course, in an ideal world, we would have imagined every type of scenario one would just set out in the protocol, but really, um, it is possible that since the protocol was published, we decide that there has been, we find that there's been changes to how we've grouped the studies. Um, of course, we would still be thinking about what's useful to the people that use the reviews. However, when we get to a certain stage of the synthesis, it may be that a stage of the review, it may be that after we've conducted the searching and screening, we find that in some groups there's no studies or there's only one study and that means that we wouldn't be able to synthesize in that way so we might have to rethink how we're grouping or on the other side of that um, we need to make sure that we're that we are practical in what we do and there may be a lot of that of diversity but we need to consider what resources and time scale we have for the review we don't want to become overwhelmed with overcomplicated groupings if that's not completely necessary. So for this item, we're saying that we should report clearly how we have um, grouped the studies and then make it really clear if we've made changes to how the studies have been grouped. And moving on now to the next section, which is about reporting standardised metrics, the synthesis methods and limitations of the synthesis. So the first of these items is about describing the standardised metric. So this item says, describe the standardised metric for each outcome, explain why the metric was chosen, and describe any methods used to transform the intervention effects as reported in the study to the standardised metric, citing any methodological guidance used. So when we're synthesising, at some level, we're finding something common to the studies or data, and we call that the standardised metric. So in a meta-analysis, the standardised effect sizes are the standardised metric. So for this type of quantitative data from intervention studies, the standardised metrics that we'll have available to us will be effect sizes, but there's a reason that we're not able to meta-analyse for example, the, we might be provided by the effect sizes in the studies, but there's information missing, such as the variance might be missing, so we're not able to meta-analyse. So we may have effect sizes, uh, we may have direction of effect, or we may have p-values. So effect sizes, I'm sure everybody will be familiar with this. 
These are things like the risk ratios, the odds ratios, the standardised mean differences that are um, provided in the studies. Or the direction of effect, it would be whether it favours the intervention or treatment, whether it favours the control or whether it reports no effect. Or we may have p-values. We'd be looking for one-sided p-values with the p-values all reflecting the same directional hypothesis. So these standardised metrics link really closely with the synthesis methods used. So we'll now look at item three, which is about describing the synthesis method. So this is describe and justify the methods used to synthesise the effects when it was not possible to undertake a meta-analysis of effect estimates. So the types of synthesis methods that we would have available to us are summarising the effect estimates, vote counting based on direction of effect or combining p-values. So as Hilary has said already, SWIM is about how we report the synthesis for a thorough explanation of how we can conduct these types of synthesis. We point you to chapter 12 of the Cochrane Handbook. But for now, we'll have a, a brief look at these types of synthesis. So, as I said before, the standardised metric and the synthesis method are closely linked. So, depending on what standardised metric we have, that can point us in the direction of what synthesis methods we would have available to us. So, if we have effect sizes, then we would be able to summarise the effect size or the effect estimate. If we have direction of effect, we would be able to conduct fault counting based or if we have p-values, we could combine the p-values. So for summarising the effect estimates, we can do this when we have the estimates of the intervention effect, but there's a reason we can't meta-analyse. And then this summarising the effect estimates would mean we can provide descriptive statistics such as the median or the range. If we were doing vote counting based on direction of effect, we can do this, we can conduct this when we only have the direction of effect of the studies, or there's no consistent effect measure or data reported across the studies. And we'd be looking to see whether there's a benefit or a harm based on direction of effect, but we would not be focusing on statistical significance. Or if we were going to combine p-values, we can do this when we have the p-values and also the direction of effect of the studies, the outcomes and statistical tests differ across the studies or the studies report non-parametric test results. And as I mentioned a minute ago, we would use or we would want to convert to one-sided p-values. And there's a reference on the very last slide of this um, presentation for how to do that. But as I say, that's just a, a brief, brief overview. And if you want more information about how actually to conduct these types of synthesis, we point you to um, other sources such as chapter 12 of the Cochrane Handbook. And something just to note is that depending on the type of synthesis method used, you'll be answering a slightly different question. So if we were conducting meta-analysis, we're answering the question, what is the average effect size? But these other methods will be answering a different question to that. So if we're summarising effect estimates, we're answering the question, what is the range and distribution of effects? If we're vote counting, based on direction of effect, we're answering the question, is there any evidence of an effect? Or if we're combining p-values, we're answering the question, is there evidence that there's an effect in at least one study? And so relating to how we group studies and the synthesis methods used is lim reporting limitations of the synthesis, and that's item nine. So we'll have a look at item nine just now. So item nine says, report the limitations of the synthesis methods used and or the groupings used in the synthesis and how these affect the conclusions that can be drawn in relation to the original review question. So limitations of the synthesis might relate to the standardised metric or the synthesis method used, or they might relate to changes to how we group the studies. And this can have implications for what questions can be answered and the synthesis, how the synthesis can be interpreted. So, for example, 
If the standardised metric used is direction of effect, so we're conducting vote counting based on direction of effect, the review question we're answering is, is there any evidence of an effect? And that's different to if we've been conducting a meta-analysis, the question would be, what is the average intervention effect size? So we should note what we're able to answer with the type of synthesis we're using. Or if there was a lack of studies, that might mean that we've changed how the synthesis is structured, and that ha might have implications for what we're able to talk about, what, what analysis we're able to do um, with comparing within and between groups in the synthesis. So we should also make sure we're clear on what we're able to report, depending on how we've grouped the synthesis. <clears throat> 